Today's video, we're going to be breaking down the Chicago Bears offensive playbook in Madden 25. And we're going to be breaking down a little mini scheme that you can utilize to kind of maximize the power of this playbook. Now, this playbook features a lot of good formations, like su such as these Y off trips formations. This uh, tight Y off week is pretty decent. But really, the power formations are these Y trips formations, in addition to these bunch strong and bunch strong offset formations. These are the bread and butter of the playbook. It does have some kind of unique spread stuff as well, as well as some really cool under center stuff that we'll get into when we kind of get into some of our red zone tutorials. But all in all, this formation is really powered by the bunch strong nasty and the bunch strong offset formation. Now, the way that I like to run this playbook is we're going to be coming out in bunch strong offset and we're going to be audibly into bunch strong nasty. And then you could also audible into these wild trips formations. So the audibles that I like to set in bunch strong uh, gun, bunch strong nasty is the play mesh flat spot, the play dagger, wide trail and PA bunch shot. You can go ahead and put the bubble in if you want to run the ball. I don't really like to run the ball. So we're just going to set all these good passing plays to be able to have at our disposal. In the Bunch Strong Offset Formation, this features some of the most powerful plays in the game. We're going to set in our audibles here the play Corner Strike. We're going to have this RPO alert screen in case we ever get a good look to run. Verts Dig and the play Wide Trail. And then we're going to pretty much base out of the play Flood or the play Dagger. Normally, we're going to be in this, in this play Flood. Now let's take a look at this Wild Trips Weak Formation. And you'll see here that this Wild Trips Weak Formation does have some kind of unique post routes that are pretty decent in this game, as well as some goal line uh, concepts. But really it's this Y Off Trips Formation. This Y Off Trip Formation features motion plays such as this motion Y screen, the RPO counter alert. So we'll just set some audibles here for you. We'll go RPO counter alert at one of them. We'll do this motion Y screen at one of them. And then really we're just looking for kind of some cool stuff. I think this direct snap is actually pretty good. And then let's see if we have any other good stuff. Oh yeah, this RPO, RPO uh, read flat. Both of these are really good. I like the RPO read flat probably the best. So you see how we kind of have some really, really good plays. And actually I think we are gonna um, take this alert out and we're gonna instead either put an RPO counter peak inside zone Basically something, you know, you know, again, this is the idea here is we're going to audible into this in the red zone. The sprint right flood or sprint flood could be a really glitchy play, but we're just going to go with RPO bubble plot. So you see how we kind of have some bubble gum in this scheme here, and then we have really our main two formations are going to be this. Now, as I said in the beginning, we're going to be coming out in the play flood every single time, and with the Chiefs, we're going to want to put Xavier Worthy, our fastest player on the outside right here, we're going to put Marquise Brown at the uh, outside on the left, and we're going to put McCall Hardman in the slot, okay? And we're going to be coming out in the play flood. So the way that we're going to run the play flood, in its simplest form, this play is good against every coverage. All you're going to do is you're just going to stem the tight end corner down all the way, and this is just going to create a simple high-low read between this flat route, this uh, corner route, and then, of course, your backside dig. So what this flat route is going to force your opponent to do is it's, they're going to have to play basically hard flat coverage. I actually don't know what my what, what I came out in. I thought I came out in cover four drop, but it's actually kind of crazy that this is playing. Watch this hook curl. I think this hook curl is actually matching the tight end. I have not even noticed that this year. Take a look at this hook curl. Where's the hook curl going? <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Zones in this game don't make a whole lot of sense to me at this point. But a lot of times what's going to happen is they're going to hard flat, right? And so when they hard flat, this tight end corner is going to get into a really kind of unique position against the defense where they're not going to be able to defend it with a hard flat. I'll show you, show you this one more time. Hopefully we won't get absolutely yelled at here by a dollar. If defense was this easy in the actual game, it'd be crazy. But there you see, able to throw this route to, to, to Kelsey, and we have this kind of high-low read on the right. Now we always take a look at this um, at this fade route. So this fade route is really good specifically for like a cover zero blitz type of situation because what happens a lot of times in cover zero is they do get a middle third, but a middle third is not going to defend this deep fade. So you see something like this. Okay, we're going to take our shot over the top. And with the Chiefs, that's why we have Xavier Worthy there or the, just the fastest player. A lot of times this is going to be basically a touchdown. So you see here, oh, I get blitzed. 
okay, we'll just loft this up, give our player a chance to go make a play. So that's kind of the first thing that I like to do out of this play flood. Now, the second thing that I like to do out of this play flood is a basically a coverage beater. Uh, this is specifically going to be ran if they're running a lot of drop zone, cover four, cover three. So the setup for uh, the drop zone type of deal, and there you see, that's actually what you normally get. For the drop zone coverage, what I like to do is we're going to stem that tight end corner down like we were. We're going to put the slot receiver on a post this time, and we're going to stem him up to about 15 yards of depth. So you see this is what it looks like. On the back end of this play, I like to put a drag route. The reason we like to put a drag route is just because it's going to help us, it's going to help us um, have a late high-low read between the corner and the drag. The in route really doesn't get into a good spot of the field, and it can potentially get this post route open if they're in any kind of like zone uh, cover three. So here is cover four. You're going to see that Xavier Worthy is just going to – kind of glitch this quarter. The reason it is because that outside quarter is going to go to the tight end corner because we stem the tight end all the way down. So again, we're just going to stem this tight end all the way down. And this time I'll leave my cover four backed off a little bit more. This is going to be better for the defense, but you'll see that eventually this guy will go. And when he goes, you're going to freeform this up and to the right. And this is a one play score against cover four. Now, this is also a one-play score against cover three coverage. Now, as you see here, we have cover three to the right side. And again, I'm just going to shade it down to prevent any kind of randomness. And what you're going to see here is this post to the slot receiver. We'll pull this middle third inside just a step. And when he does that, you can just freeform this up and over. And again, this is, why you, this is also why you use the Chiefs. They have the fastest receiving core in the league for a reason. So, really, really like this team. Well, I mean, they, they might be – the Dolphins technically might actually have a faster receiving core, but the Chiefs receiving core is paired with Mahomes' arm. So, anyway, there you see that against cover four. Now, the other th – or cover three. Now, the other thing that we can do to cover three is let's say the cover three cloud was flipped. A lot of times what will also happen on this play is because we're dragging that solo receiver – this post route has a good chance of crossing the face of the middle third. So you see how he's going to cross, and he can actually – he can get into a soft spot where he can get open against cover three. That time he did not get open against cover three. Let me show you this again, though. And this is why we stem him up to 15 yards. If you don't stem him to, like, 15-ish yards, he doesn't cut – he cuts too early, and oftentimes he won't be able to get open for you. Look at Barnes. Look at – so the <laughs> – Oh, man. I'll tell you, these practice mode sheds, like, they are wild. We're just – I think I might literally just be done doing video tutorials with practice mode sheds. I say that all the time, but this this might be the last straw. I think we're going to spy on the rest of this video. If you guys didn't know in Madden uh, practice mode, the sheds are super tuned up. But you see here, and then with Mahomes, we just want to freeform that straight up. Now, that outside third is actually playing this crazy good. Let's show it one more time, and if we can't get it, we can't get it. But we do have other ways to bomb cover three. But one of my favorite is this one. And the reason why I like this one is because it's a cover three bomb on both sides. Like, you can bomb it to the right, and you can bomb it to the left. All right, here we go. 15 yards. You're going to cut, and you're going to throw it kind of right there. And that time we get better timing. And you see that this can just absolutely destroy cover three. So... The beauty of this play is that it's able to manipulate cover three and cover four coverages. And then let's say that they do run cover two. Cover two is typically the best method that people will utilize to basically try to bomb proof their coverage because the deep halves normally prevent some of these bombs that cover three and cover four will give up. However, let me take a look at this here. You'll see that it will do a decent job. If you watch this fade route here, you'll see that this fade – you can't really throw this to the wide side unless you do that. <laughs> um, you can't really throw it to the wide side unless you just get, get crazy with your, with your user catching. But what you can throw is this corner, typically, or this backside drag. And I'll show that real quick. So this is all, And I'll show you something kind of advanced with this, too. But watch this corner around on the right. So you see how it pulls that cloud way out of the play, and then that guy's wide open. Now, low-key, soft squats might be the best way to play this year because if I put, I'm going to put this guy on the right on a cloud, 
we'll kind of kind of show you something kind of unique. A lot of people probably don't know this. So I have my match coverage turned on, and most people don't realize that soft squats in this game are probably, like I said, the best zone. Because if it's a cloud flat, he's not going to match him. So you see how I can just loft this eventually over the top of him? Sauce is a little bit, like, better than the average corner, but normally you'll be able to uh, loft this over the top. So let me just put him in a cloud again. We'll, we'll do a couple reps like this. This time I won't stem the corner all the way down. I'm going to try to get it to run just a little deeper. So we're going to stem it down one tick. And then we'll see if this can, this can get over the top. So you see here's the cloud. And you see that it's able to get over the top of the cloud. See how the cloud doesn't guard it? But what's really interesting is if you look at this play, I'm in Tampa 2. Uh, Tampa 2 and Dollar has soft squats. So let me actually audible to it here. Tampa 2 drop. This has soft squat zones. So what a soft squat zone is designed to do is actually have a match principle built within it. So we'll see right here if this soft squat actually matches on this right side. So you see how that soft squat is matching that outside player? This is what's crazy. So and I'll, I'll show this in replay. So obviously the rep before what we just ran, watch what this guy does. This is a soft squat. Because this corner, this tight end corner, doesn't come into his area fast enough, he decides he's going to match this guy up the vertical seam, which then leaves this open. But let me show you something really unique or really interesting. I'm going to use the soft squats again, but now I'm going to stem the tight end corner all the way down. And what you're going to see here, hopefully, is this corner, he'll go fast enough. And now watch the corner. See how the corner is matching him? See how he's matching him? That is the soft squat in action. That is why a soft squat is a really good zone in this game because of its matching principles. However, a way to manipulate its matching principles is what we're showing you here with this play where instead of what a lot of people like to do is they just stem the corner all the way down. If you let it, if you give it just a little bit more time, so maybe like about five yard depth, now watch the soft squat. You see you get a lot better spacing with this route combination. So just a little pro tip uh, with this play. There are certain reasons to stem this all the way down. Like if you're going to be playing cover four drop, right? Stemming this all the way down normally is going to do a really good job of kind of getting him into a good spot. But let's say you're playing like, again, like cover two with our next setup we're going to be going over. It might be better to like put him at a five yard depth because now against cover two, you see that he's able to run up and over the top of the defender. So let's move on to the next setup uh, for this play. Or actually, I didn't cover man coverage yet. So let's talk about this play as it relates to man coverage. Man coverage, I think, is decent-ish. But it just can get very manipulated. So the biggest thing here is this setup does a decent enough job against man coverage because you have, number one, you have your tight end corner. Number two, you have this drag. Drags normally do a really good job of beating man. And so if you think about what the user is going to do, most of the time the user is going to run down and to the right. He's going to work the tight end route. He's going to try to take away stuff like that, right? Well, the beauty of this play and the beauty of pass lead to lead or set fee lead is watch this post. You can just throw this in front of the deep half. And possession catches are super effective in this year's game. So all in all, you have a play. Now, this play is not designed to beat man. If they're calling man a lot, we have other plays we're going to break down. But this play can do a good job against man coverage for you. So the next play that we're going to be going over, or the next setup we're going to be going over, is the play corner strike. So what's good about corner strike, a couple different things, is, number one, the short corner on the right side. And you're going to see here that if I run this corner, the outside quarter will not bite down to that quarter. So what I like to do with this is run the double corner combo. So the double corner combo, something from last year, we're going to drag this solo. We're going to corner route our slot. And you see how this is going to run super deep. And then we're going to streak our tight end and then block our running back here. So what we like to do with this with this, uh, this slot receiver is we're actually going to stem him up to about 15 to 20 yards, so super deep corner. And the purpose of that is to prevent any kind of randomness against cover two because cover two is the only coverage that can defend this short corner to the right, and we'll go over that. So you see that this short corner to the right, he gets defended by that cloud. What we want is that deep corner to clear that cover two, as you see it does right there. So 
the only um, so now let's talk about like cover four curl flats. So what you'll see again, I'm gonna this is kind of the setup here. Whoops, let me uh, actually audible to the play. There we go, and we have this corner. So what I like to do with this corner is we're gonna stem. You see how he's about 12-ish yards. We're just gonna get him up to 15, maybe even 20. And what you're gonna see with that stem is he's gonna pull that outside quarter to him, and this is gonna be open over the top. This also is gonna be true of a cover three type coverage. Let you see here. Stem him up. Watch this short corner. The curl flat looks like it's going to guard it, but you could just kind of throw it in between the zones. So that's an option that you have uh, within this play. And curl flats, I think, honestly, are better than they've ever been at defending the sideline. They're not really good at defending underneath, but they're very good at defending the deep sideline. But let's say, you know, they want to use a, a shaded down, shaded up cloud. Watch this cloud flat. You'll see this cloud flat really is never going to defend this, right? So this is a great way to manipulate zone coverage. And if they switch it to the short corner with, like, let's say this outside quarter. So I'm going to try to imitate this. But, but basically the idea is that this corner would kind of they'd switch to him and he'd be, like, right in here, right? Well, let's see if we can get this to kind of work. And to do this, we'll just use this route. So what you'll see here is they're going to switch stick. And basically, they would leave this area open. It's hard to it's really hard to show in practice mode. But essentially, let me try to show it one more time here. This is why we want this corner to be about 15 to 20 yards. Because we want it to run long enough that they don't, like, know, right? So snap. They're going to sit there, and then it leaves that area of the field open. So that's why I like to use this. That's why I like to use this route combo. The other reason why this route combo is effective is because against man coverage, this short corner in corner strike is really pretty decent at beating man coverage. So again, this is what the play looks like. Watch this short corner. He's going to kind of get this cut. Now again, he is going against Sauce, but you'll see Wordily is not like. He's not a great route runner by any means. But, and again, we are going to have some other specific, man-to-man -man specific plays. But normally he's going to get this cut. See, he's not getting it here, so we'll just check it down to the drag. Normally he's going to get this cut where he's going to be able to beat it a little bit better. Again, he's not going to, he might not get it just because sauce is, is sauce. We'll see here. Let's see if it gets it here. Looks like he should get it here. Yeah, he's like it's like he wants to get it, but he's just not. It's like Sauce is just. I think Sauce has inside shade or something. So we'll just uh, you know what we'll do. We'll just flip the play. So if you flip the play, let's say you're running up and you you know you just play like a regular corner. You'll see here that this corner. You see there's the separation. So that's the idea. So the second thing that I want to go over with this is kind of an alternate setup to the play flood, which is to kind of invert this double corner concept. The way we're going to invert this double corner concept is we're going to put the tight end now. As you see, he's going about 10 yards. We're going to stem him up to about 15-ish yards. We're going to corner out our slot, and we're going to stem him down all the way. And so what this will do is this will do a really good job of kind of manipulating a lot of different coverages on that right sideline. So they can't really key in on one receiver. You can run a corner out to your slot. You can run a corner out to your tight end. You can run a corner out to your outside guy. Another one of my favorite combos here from Corner Strike is to use this play to attack this left sideline. So the way we're going to use this play to attack the left sideline is we're going to really key in on the C route and this running back route. So what I like to do as far as my, my combination here is this slot receiver can be stemmed so we're just going to stem him, like, basically all the way up. And what you'll see is he's just going to essentially run straight across the field. Then what I like to do is just curl this receiver, and we have kind of a flat curl combo on the right. But we really have this high-low on the left. So 
what happens is because we stem this crossing route, because we stem this um, the slot receiver all the way across the field, it's going to pull any kind of outside third or outside quarter. So that allows that C route to kind of be thrown in that soft spot of the field. So what your opponent's going to have to do is they're going to have to say, okay, well, we're going to have to take that away. And there's really only two methods. The first one is to play cover two. And the second one is to play cover four with like purples. Both methods typically are going to leave this running back open. You see here the curl flat actually for some reason didn't actually go play it. He played the running back. So I'll show you kind of a little bit more of a foolproof method, which is to use cover two here. So you'll see we're going to use that cover two coverage. And you see how he goes to that. And then this leaves this high. So it's a, again, all we're doing, and this is what Madden is at its core, every concept to a degree is a high-low read. We're trying to put a defender in conflict. We're trying to put a space on the field in conflict. So who are we putting in conflict with this combination? We're putting this left side, outside corner in conflict. If he plays that C route, oftentimes this running back is going to get wide open underneath of the, of the defense. So this is one of my favorite plays for this. This is also one of my – I think this is a pretty decent play against man this year. You have, a, you have some good routes on this. So the first route that's really good against man here is just your slot cross. A lot of times he's unbumpable, and you can just throw him in the middle of the field. So if they do get – if we are getting a lot of man, this will be a play that I would really consider calling. Uh, the other thing about man this year that's kind of interesting is curls are really good. Uh, I think curls are really good against man. So you'll see here, just you basically want to throw right on the cut. And if you throw right on the cut, I'm not free forming anyway. I'm just throwing, I'm, pa I'm basically pass leading down, but I'm not free forming down. You see, we're able to hit this, this curl route. Another route that you have that does pretty decent against man coverage on this play is this backside C route when he cuts to the outside. It's better than the double post C route. I feel like the double post C route is a little bit more inconsistent in its ability to beat man coverage, whereas this C route from corner strike is going to do a little better job just of consistently attacking this. And then you also have your running back, and this running back in route really is pretty decent at attacking, uh, at att attacking man coverage. So you're going to kind of essentially ultimately what we're going to do with this, with this scheme is we're going to force essentially a lot of like this type of double flatting on both sides with the user in the middle of the field, kind of cover two style defense. So this is where I like to go to my play wide trail. So the reason we like to use this play wide trail is it's a great man beater and it's a great cover two beater. So the way that I like to use this to be able to attack man to man coverage is we are just going to literally call the play. What you can also do with your running back this year is you can actually put your running back like in motion to the left and we can put him on a either streak if you want to use a streak or a corner what i like to reason i like to use the corner is it's going to pull the deep half so something simple like this and you're going to see that against cover two that corner pulls that deep half to the left the other corner pulls the deep half to the right and you're able to bomb cover two so we want to again as i was talking a little bit about earlier when we were going over flood, one of the best ways to combat the bombs is to play cover two, but cover two is vulnerable if we know you are in cover two because something simple like what I just showed you is a great cover two beater. Another great thing that I like to do against cover two, this is more of a situational play call, but basically all we're going to do is we're just going to run the flood setup, but we're just going to flip it. So instead of running the, the flood setup like we were, now you see that we're running it this direction. The reason I like this version is because when you run this glitchy fade to the short side of the field, this deep half will turn to the middle of the field, leaving this massive area to throw this glitchy fade over the top for a touchdown. So that's another way that we can manipulate cover two within this playbook. Another thing we can do to manipulate cover two in this playbook is specifically manipulating cloud flat defenders. So this leads us to kind of our next play, which is the play verts dig. And all we're going to do is we're going to streak our running back, we're going to drag our tight end, and we're going to post this slot receiver. So the reason this play is going to be effective is it can literally attack every coverage. But against cover two specifically, this fade on the left side, 
see how that safety, kind of like he did in the previous clip that I showed you, the safety on the left side is going to turn his hips to the middle of the field. Cover two safeties on the, when they're defending the short side of the field, they, they turn their hips to the middle. So what you're going to see is I'm looking at that safety. Once he turns those, those hips, and here they actually match because I left the soft squats, so we can just throw. We have everything open. Like another reason why, another way we can manipulate soft squats, because I do think soft squats are good, another way we can manipulate soft squats would be with this route combo because watch that soft squat. You'll see it's just going to match, and it's going to leave this tight end wide open, and they just, there's just no flat defender, right? So what they're going to do is they're going to have a flat defender and a cloud defender, so something like this, double flatting. If they do that, then this is where we can get this fade. See how he kind of turns his hips inside here? And again, the window is a little harder in Madden, especially, you know, just kind of if they're not pressing. But if it's a pressed cloud, you'll see it a little bit more obviously. So here's a press cloud. We're just going to let him release him. And you see there's this little void on that sideline to throw it to. So one of the ways that we can manipulate cover two is by taking advantage of that void. And the, I think one of the best ways to take advantage of the void is to use vertus dig because you want this glitchy wheel fade. And then we're going to motion the running back into the, into the play and put the running back on a post that's going to run kind of over the middle of the field. Let me see if I can you, – you can basically leave it like this or you can just – I like to stem it up to about 15 yards, kind of more of a deeper post and then drag this backside player. So what this does is against cover two coverage, we're really going to manipulate kind of that deep half. And you see there that we can get that fade open for a touchdown against cover two if they want to play cover two. So there's a lot of different ways to manipulate cover two in this game, but I just think it's important to have some of them in your arsenal. One of my favorite ways to manipulate cover two is the play wide trail and just putting the running back in motion. And then once you put the running back in motion, you can honestly put him on, a, if, you, if you have the ability to put him on a wheel like you have Howard Master, that's a good setup. But honestly, I think the easiest way is just put the running back on a corner, stem him all the way down. If they are in cover two, once this post cuts to the middle of the field, you're just going to see that it's going to split that cover two and give yourself a big play. So that's a big, big principle for this offense. So the next thing that we're going to take a look at here is going to be this first wide dig play. This was known as Durham last year, and this is a really good combo. So what makes this combo good is that you're attacking the flats on both sides. You have a high-low in the middle of the field between the post and the drag, or the, the post and the running back, and you have a high-low on the left sideline between the post and the drag. So our first read on this play typically is going to be this flat to the right side. In this year's game, if they're not playing hard flats, you're going to be able to throw that consistently against zone. And so it's going to force them to have to put that defender on the right in a hard flat. Let me explain. Let's say we have a soft squat out here. If we have a soft squat out here, you would think that a soft squat would guard this well. Well, if I throw this instantly, see how that soft squat's going to freeze, and I can actually throw right at the soft squat defender. Now, obviously, you know, might not be the smartest thing to do because you are running a little bit of a risk with this. So you can obviously just progress to your next read, which is your running back. In this example, the yellows are going to play the running back, so then we're going to progress to that high-low on the left side between the tight end and the post. Now, a very popular way that people like to play defense is let's say they're setting up a blitz like this on you, and then let's say that they're um, – you know, maybe trying to really defend this left sideline or this right sideline, right? This puts this defender, which is typically going to be their user, in a ton of conflict because how do you guard the entire middle? So you have to basically choose between the running back and this post. So as you see, if they choose the post, the running back is going to be open. And then if they choose the running back, let's show this again. And here, this is a little better. We're just going to send four. But again, he's still in conflict, right? So let's say he chooses, let's say he chooses the, uh, the running back here. Then there's nobody in the middle of the field to be able to defend that post right in that little pocket. 
So you have that there. Now let's say, you know, they just play unbelievably amazing defense. It would probably look something like this. And this guy would be in a vertical hook. So we still have a lot of conflict here on the left side between these yellow zones. And basically, let's say that they actually use her this crossing route across the middle of the field because the crossing route will get open and they would have to run with it. So they're basically trusting this vertical hook to guard the running back. But what happens most of the time in this game is – actually, that vertical played it better than I've ever seen it play it before. Number one, we could throw it early. We could throw that early. So what people are going to do is they're going to shade that vert hook down. So they're going to shade it down, and then they're going to do their adjustments. And they're going to take this slot receiver across the middle, right? Well, typically what you'll be able to do with this play is once this running back kind of runs past the vert hook, you can throw it in between the vert hook and the deep defenders and possession catch it for a big play. So that's a big time route to keep in your arsenal because most of the time what they're going to ultimately do is they're going to just use the running back route because you're going to throw the running back route a lot, right? Well, when they do that, we have so much strain here on the right sideline. Very rarely will they have a zone that will be able to play this post route other than maybe switch sticking to it, which could ultimately leave that fade open for a touchdown. So these are some of my favorite plays and setups out of the Bunch Strong offset formation. And now I want to go over just a couple of plays in the Bunch Strong Nasty. So the main play that we use in Bunch Strong Nasty is this play dagger. And what I like to do, my first setup for this play, is we're just going to take this, the uh, tight end and put him on a post. Now the reason for this is this is a quick hike play. And it's just going to be a basic high-low read, but we have a slot streak here attached to this and it just clears out the entire it's actually it, it just clears out the deep area of the field and so let's say for example that you're getting a lot of this cover two type coverage this combination will normally do a really good job of defending this or defeating this so you see here's cover two and you see how that post just kind of gets into a really nice area of the field against that coverage so they basically have to use her this tight end post, which is going to kind of lead me to my next setup of dagger, which is we're going to drag the slot receiver and we're going to post the outside bunch receiver. The reason I like this setup is because now we're going to get kind of a delayed in route coming over the middle, and then we still have that same high-low read. So this delayed in route, you see how that puts a lot of strain. I kind of call this like a cross concept. So again, drag your slot, post your outside receiver. First read's always going to be this fade on the left. Then you're looking to this drag. And then really you're looking to the post. For some reason, the post is kind of getting bumped. But normally that post will run a little better than what he's doing here for us. And what's nice about this post route is it's going to do a really good job of beating man to man. And you can if you want to stem it up one. You certainly can do that. But you'll see here, he just gets into a, a real soft spot against those zone coverages. The next play that I like to use out of Bunch Strong Nasty is going to be Mesh Flat Spot. The setup for this is we're just going to stem this corner route all the way down. We're going to streak our slot receiver, and we're going to post our tight end. So it looks very similar to the play dagger. The main difference being this high-low read between the corner and the flat. Oftentimes, this corner is going to run super fast, and it's going to be a good read against cover four, cover three, cover two, right? So that was cover four with a curl flat. And now I'm going to show you cover, um, cover three with a curl flat. You see here, this is, I think, cover three cloud. And then you see that we're able to put this into a, a, a nice spot on the field. Let's say that they play like cover two with a cloud flat. They play cover two with a cloud flat. You're going to see this corner. You can just basically pass lead it up and over the top of that cloud. So it's hard to play zone to the right sideline and then cover everything we're doing on the left side of the field. And the other real big benefit that we haven't even gotten into about this formation 
is this formation is not going to be able to, like people cannot play match quarters, palms, six, nine. That doesn't really work against this. So this corner route is just super hard to guard. Also, I want to give you a kind of at this point in the video, because we're doing a lot of stimming, I want to give you kind of an advanced tip. If you didn't know, if I flip the play here, I cannot stem this tight end corner route down any direction. But, and this is what I like to do. I like to always come out of my bunch to the right. And then let's say that, let's say that I'm like, let's say that the ball, because I do recommend running this, running this with your bunch to the wide side of the field. But let's say you're, you're, the ball is on the right hash. So what I would do if I was setting a mesh flat spot, I'd audible to the play. I would stem the corner. And then really important, we're going we're gonna to flip it. Let me stem the corner down here. We're going to flip it and look to the left side. Now your corner is already stemmed, and you can basically quick hike. This is one of my favorite tips. I, I, I feel like this is a huge tip for route stemming in general and how to route stem, you know, basically regardless of, of which side you want to run the play. So the next play that we want to go over uh, with this play, Dagger, is a hot route master setup. And this one is we're just going to use a slot crossing route. And the reason I like the slot crossing route over the post route is it just gets across the field a little better. And specifically, it gets to that sideline, that opposite sideline. It's going to get there faster, quicker. And I like this if I want to just simply have a high-low read over to that left sideline. Mesh, mesh flat spot is kind of our high-low read on the right. And then this play is kind of our high-low read on the left side. And of course, we have that tight end that we can check down to at any point. Another one of my favorite plays out of Dagger is simply a different variation of Durham. But what's good about this one, and I would prefer a crosser, honestly, with this. What's good about this is, just as, again, just another way, but we have this kind of seam streak in the middle of the field that we can hit. And so we're really attacking the seam area of the field with this formation. Which is also why um, the play dagger, where we just hot route the tight end, we have seam streaks on both sides. So like let's say our opponent is playing cover three. A lot of times one of these seam routes, you can just throw these in the seams and possession catch it against zone coverage. So that is uh, those. Those are some of my main plays. Uh, I did want to go over like a press cover four beater. This is out of the play Y trail. And what's good about this is this post on the left side. So I love this for beating man coverage. But what we're going to do is a setup like this. And what's going to happen is if you're let's say you're playing like a cover four. Because of this flat route, that quarter is just going to kind of stand still. And then you can actually throw this in a really tight window over the top against cover four for a, a big, big play. And then again, you can also do this against cover three. So you see here I have cover three here to the left side. And I would typically suggest doing this against a press cover three. And then what you'll see here is once he kind of crosses the safety's face, there's that little void where we can throw it against cover three as well. Another thing that you can do is let's say, remember we were talking a little bit about cover two. So let's go back to that dagger setup. What's cool about the dagger play is you have the slot fade, right? So what I like to do is motion the running back out every now and then. And we can put this uh, motioned running back. My game just froze for some reason. Uh, we could just put him on a post. And again, we're going to stem him up to significantly. And then what I would probably do from here is if you wanted to leave the setup like this, you certainly could do that. I think the simple thing would probably be a slant route from the slot receiver, maybe a corner route from the backside receiver, something like this. But what's cool about this is this fade, see how that safety turns his hips to the middle? And then we can throw this fade for a one-play score against cover two. Another thing that you could do with dagger, it's a little bit of an advanced throw. But I did want to show you this as well. Is let's say they're playing that cover two kind of coverage. We audible to dagger, and we're going to use that slot cross. So what's good about this slot cross is it also gets across the field quickly. So watch the deep half. You're going to see he kind of turns inside, 
there is a window that you could potentially hit that hit that uh, that fade. Honestly, I want to say you might even be able to let's let's test this a little bit. This is kind of live labbing a little bit, but let's actually test and see. I think you can hit this uh, this fade with this tight end post combo because the tight end post is going to pull this probably a little better. See how right there? See how he turned his hips inside. And that's really what we're looking for. Now, we did get bumped, and so I think that's ultimately why Brown didn't really run a good route. But let's, uh, let's kind of tinker with this, because I think this could be good. Let's just stem the tight end down so he cuts a little quicker. And the safety turns his hips inside. And it's not quite doing what I wanted to do. So the way that you can really make this work, though, for you is by motioning. Put, put anyone over there and put them on a streak or a post. So, like, We'll go over it one more time. So dagger. Let's say we don't want. Let's say we want to keep the running back in because we want to block him. What you might consider doing is dragging, um, or I'm sorry, not dragging, taking this guy uh, worthy and motioning him across and putting him on a post, and basically just run the play like this. And now you'll see here the deep half goes inside, just a, takes a step inside. And there's this window outside, and that's why you use the Chiefs. They got the fastest receivers in the game as far as a receiving core with Mahomes' arm. And we'll show it to you one more time with just a different combo that I think just giving you guys some different options here. Let's take the slot. Most, I guess we can't motion the slot. Motion the tight end across. See, he kind of goes into a little bit more of a compressed alignment. We're going to put him in the post. I really would suggest stemming the post up about 15 yards. You'll see, watch the deep half, see how he turns to the middle. And then there's this big, big alley where you can throw this over the top for a big play. Okay, so that's pretty much a lot of the concepts that I like to use to beat, like, all of the different zone concepts. I did want to spend just a minute or two with you guys here. Just giving you some basic man beaters in this scheme. So as far as like beating man coverage, I don't ever like to just come out in a man beating play unless they're just spamming man. What I like to do though, what are my favorite routes against man is this flood play. And we're gonna take the tight end and we're gonna put him on a slant. We're gonna stem the solo receiver up to about 15 yards. And then we're gonna put the slot receiver on a corner and stem him all the way down. So the reason that this is going to be good is it still is a good read against zone, but this corner is oftentimes going to get separation on man. And what I like to do, let me actually show you that one more time here. So this corner oftentimes is going to get separation on man. And you'll see how he kind of gets bumped. If he doesn't get separation on man, throw your in route. Your in route's going to be open. But essentially what we're doing with this concept is we have this – this read over the middle of the field that should beat man coverage. And then we have something over the on the right side. So you see here, let's see if this get this corner open. Corner doesn't get open, but the backside dig does. And the dig to me, I think I think some of the best man beating routes this year are in routes, uh, Texas routes from the running back, zig routes. So like a Texas route. I know the Jets running back has running back prentice. So you could do something like this as well if you wanted to send five out. So you have the drag, as you see. And then if they run, like, cover two man where they're chasing stuff and they might, like, chase the corner on the right or something, then this route to the running back should be open for you. So he cuts there, and then if, if he's covered, that's going to be open. So it's one of my, like, immediate answers. Another thing I like to do against man is go to the bunch strong nasty wide trail and basically run this combo. This combo is really good against man coverage. The uh, Another one of the best man beating routes in the game is the trail route. And you could do it from this, but I, I think it's better like this. So you'll see here that this tight end trail. <laughs> oh, man, look at these sheds. Isn't this wild? I keep I keep telling you guys. Let's go over this again. We'll just do it from this formation too. Like you can do it from either one. But basically this. A little bit better spacing here. Look at the running back. A lot of times it can create some man switching, some glitches. 
So, like, if I run a true, just basic cover two man, because we're in a quad set, it's, like, super far for that defender to run. So, you see here, we get kind of some swapping. And a lot of times, the, a lot of times the running back basically is wide open. Now, if you have the ability to put your running back on a wheel, another thing you can do with this play is put your um, put the corner route out here to the right side. And you'll see here that that also creates space to throw this trail route or this post. So this is what also can open up. Like, let's say we're playing cover two man, doing something like this against cover two. The deep half on the right gets pulled. So we can just kind of throw this post in this soft spot against that coverage. Another one of my favorite tips, if you're struggling to beat man, is to that flood play where I said we were on short side, we're going to flip it now. And on the back side here, we're just going to run the speed out at about 15-yard depths. And then you can do really whatever you want to do. Like if on this other side, like if you wanted to do like a, a post – like something like this, you're still going to be able to manipulate that coverage deep against cover two. But this gives you a high-low read. But I want you to watch this speed out. It's so basically just going to cut the outside. What I would suggest to you guys, as someone who's, who really loves this speed out route, don't freeform it. Just pass lead it outside. Right on the cut, just trust the route. It's super good. It's hard to guard in man. You, you have that route. And this is Xavier Worthy against Sauce Gardner. You know what I mean? But then if you wanted to do this on the back end, now you have, you know, your, your fade, you have your post, you, ha you, you have all this other stuff, you know, that you can go to. So, like, for example, let's say, let's say they're running a lot of cover one. We'll flip it. We get this, we get this speed out, get this drag, get this post. We'll stem this post about 15 yards. And you'll see here, I guess I audible to cover two man, but, but you, see, you see that that is now available in the middle of the field. So if they are running, you know, cover one, this to me is a really good combo because that middle third is going to go to the to fade for a second. And then I want you to watch this post. See how he kind of crosses the face of that middle third? Now, he should beat it better than that. He's not, he's not doing a great job of beating it. But another thing you could do, let me show you one other thing with this, is kind of that dagger idea or a flip. We have that speed out on the right. Post the tight end. Stem him to about 15. And then, and then you can just drag this to that backside. So now you're unbumpable, you know. And then if you ever get in trouble, you can just ag back to the ball. You know, so you have, you have you have different plays like different things you can do like that. Um, what I would what I would recommend is let's say if you go to if you go to bunch strong nasty, you can't put a speed out on that solo receiver, but you can put an out route, and this out route against man coverage a lot of times wins. I'm a huge fan of like ten yard out routes, fifteen yard out routes, fifteen yard in routes like. Another one of my favorite plays uh, in this game is let's go back to I think it's let's go corner strike, and so we have this 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 basic like streak corner route, and then we can put a running back flat to create that high low read, or and then we can take the tight end and we're going to put him on in route and we're going to stem him up significantly, and then on the back end we can drag. Watch this tight end in route against man. You see here, once he cuts, he is going to win most of the time. He actually got crazy bumped. Good old practice mode. Is just, it just does a great job at bumping. But, like, even something like this. Like, to me, this is a really good combo. You know, see here, it's that sharp cut against man. Able to beat man coverage. So those all are like some of the easy, simple ways in which I like to beat man coverage. At this point in the video, I want to break down kind of the red zone or the short yardage situational stuff that you might need down here in the, inside the five. So my favorite red zone dot right now is 
to throw this play corner strike and basically smart route the corner route. And what you'll see with this corner route is it just gets open. Like it just it just gets open. Now you don't you don't need the tight end at all, so I would probably get rid of him. Like you know, we'll just put the tight end on the drag or something. Basically just get rid of the tight end. And essentially I would probably like curl the slot receiver, maybe stem him a certain way. But my main read is this this short corner. I feel like it's really good in the red zone. It's really good against man. Now, I'm trying to think of like what red zone plays you're gonna see. Pretty much unanimous that you're gonna see like cover two cloud. So one of my favorite things to manipulate cover two cloud with is this play flood, where we're gonna put the solo receiver on a curl and we're gonna stem him all the way down. Notice he's at the numbers here. And then we're gonna put the slot receiver on a short cross. We're gonna stem that tight end corner down slightly and then we have this flat. So what you're looking for here is you can throw this tight end corner in this little soft spot. It's like a super tight window to be able to hit. But you can, uh, you can kind of fit that in. And honestly, you might even want to motion this guy out. So like against cover two, you'll see here, kind of right in that window right there. But the other thing that you can do, and why I like this against cover two, is this short cross specifically against like cloud flats. The cloud flat gets sucked inside to this hitch. And then the short cross, as you see, is standing wide open. I just have to have time in the pocket. So a lot of people like to play max coverage down here. And I'll just show you the route. As you see here, the short cross. See how that cloud flat's kind of stuck? And then it just allows us to throw this on the sideline. So it's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite um, favorite red zone plays. You can do the same thing in corner strike. The only thing is, if you stem this up, you see how you can't quite get this to go where you want it to go. Unfortunately, I haven't tried this yet. Let's just take a look at this and see if he does. This is actually crazy. It actually worked. We just found something live on the internet. So let's go over that same thing. So let's say they're playing cover two, right? You can go to the play corner strike and you can actually stem this all the way across. And basically you want to stem it until you see how this, you see how I have this like this bottom route. I'm going to stem it so that it runs to the pylon. So I'm like super stemming this up and then we're going to have this curl. Watch this, watch this crosser. See how he just runs himself into a wide open position against the defense. That's to me, that's kind of crazy that, that works. So again, we're just gonna call corner strike, stem him all the way across the field, stem the curl all the way down, and you'll see here that if he runs his route right, he will get into that, that soft spot on the field. So then what that allows us to do, number one is you don't need any hot routes, but number two, it allows us to work a combo on the backside. So the combo that I like to use is I like to stem that corner. And basically what I want is I want that corner to kind of go to the pylon. So essentially, let's just, let's actually just reset. Let's just, let's just, um, can I not? All right, it's not gonna let me. All right, I'll just show here. So you see, there you go. So basically what we're saying is if they run cover two, you're looking for this crosser, right? And if they don't run cover two, then you're looking for this corner. Now your tight end is really not a super relevant player. Like you can honestly just block him or you can um, really just put him on anything. More than likely, I think blocking him is probably the safest thing you could do. And then I like to streak my running back. So let's say it's like cover four. Watch this uh, corner route, or I guess man coverage. I'll have to show cover three cloud actually. 
So let's say it's like cover four or cover three, rather. Either one. Let's see here. Stem him down. Just one tick. Streak the running back. Stem this guy all the way across. And it kind of looks like this. It looks a little crazy, but it's a really good play. And look out here to the right. You see that we can just kind of like throw this with a super sharp and down outside pass lead against cover three. So that's one of my favorite red zone plays. If I was actually going to have to dot, that'd be something that I would probably go to. We haven't even gotten into the screen play, but this is a good play. And if you don't throw the screen, it'll just hand it off to the running back. So you could go to something like that. But really what I like to do down here is I really like to either go to this Y off trips and I'll show you kind of what this looks like in an audible situation. And we'll just go against random defenses here. So I'm going to audible a couple clicks over here to Y off trips. My favorite play is this direct snap because it's simple and you get really good blocking as you see. <laughs> So like, it's it's let's see how let's count how many clicks it is, one, two, three clicks to the left. Now let's say I'm getting a look like this. This would be a great look for the read flat, right? And the read flat, what I'm doing is I'm reading that R defender. If that R defender crashes down on the running back, then I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it with my quarterback. But normally, what I'm really looking for is that tight end, and I'll show that. One, two, three, RPO read flat. So my read defender here is the safety. And when they're at time, we can just hand it off to the running back, right? And sometimes you can literally just hand off the running back. And, and all you have to do, if you want to hand it off to the running back, the game basically does that for you. Here would be a look for the direct snap. So I would just go to direct snap, boom, get that instant catch. You see how glitchy the scheme is? And then let's say I go to, um, let's say I go to this bubble pop. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm mainly just looking at the bubble. If I can throw it, I'm going to throw it. If not, I'm just going to hand it off. So I'm going to look out here. All right, I can throw it. Or we just throw it, and then we get in there. And sometimes it won't be. The bubble screens typically, like from what I've seen, especially like the ones from like a spread trips type look like this, they pretty much have to man it up. Hard flats are going to be so-so against it, especially if they don't. Like if they pass them in a hard flat, will guard it. But if they don't pass them it, you can pretty much just throw it. Unless it's manned up, of course. And then, so you have this bubble screen. Um, this tight end is a read, as you see there. So, like, if I look, you can kind of, like, base it. Like, if they've been not really giving up the bubble screen, then you might look at that tight end. But essentially, it's a read. You're looking at that linebacker that's over the top of him. Here, you see how he doesn't, and that time my tight end didn't go in the route. But if my tight end got into a route there, he probably would have been wide open, you know. Well, let's say we get into a look like like a double mug or something super compressed, right? Now I'm just looking here. Okay, nothing there. All right, we'll just let the game hand it off to the running back. So those are some of my my methods um, with this play. We have not touched on this motion screen. So this motion screen is basically a tight end screen. So you're going to step to the right and just essentially throw your tight end. Let me just show that again. I actually think these little screen plays this year, they're better than they've ever been. By far, they're better than they've ever been. We'll show it to you on the side, actually, for fun. All right. Run. Just going to pull him. Uh, for some reason, they just decided not to block. I'm pretty sure you can also... Uh, hot route in game, you could hot route like you put X on a route. And then I think, let's see if we can get instant control with our quarterback here. We, we did not get as instant as I was hoping for. There are some there are some screens this year that you can do that with. with this apparently is not one of them. But guys, the bottom line is, if it's first and goal, you're running direct snap. You're running this direct snap, and uh, you're going to get touchdowns. Okay, so that's the like three by one receiving aspect of this scheme. And now you do have double stack in here. You do have trips. Like there's more stuff that we could get into. Like this RPO read bubble needs to be in your audibles. Um, this play, even fade stops, fade stops is really good. 
RPO's stick is really good. Uh, trips weak, right? Basically, what, what are we doing in the, in the red zone? We're doing bubble. We're basically doing bubble gum. Uh, bubble gum type of routes, little glitchy screens, just trying to kind of make it easy to score, right? That's what we're really looking for down here. So, I mean, even something like, let's take a look at this halfback screen just for fun. This is empty chips halfback screen. You see how everybody's going to the left side? So all we're going to do is we're just going to run to the right side with our quarterback, and it doesn't give us control. You know, but, I mean, this is something that you could literally just flip it out there to the running back and – like, this literally can work at the highest level because the the way the game's coded this year, the blocking on screens is actually really good. That being said, the easiest way to score down in the red zone is to run the ball. So my favorite run, screen, uh, run play in the game is wing tight left, and we're going to call wide zone. Literally, doesn't, I don't care what they call. This thing is really, really good, <laughs> as you see. Uh, this is a really good play. So basically, it's wing tight, but they give you this compressed receiver that you can then motion block, right? You can just motion block him if you want to. But really, I think the easiest thing is just call hike. You just come out here. It's a quick snap. It's a really good run play. It's super hard to guard. And then if you wanted to, when you break huddle, there's no – if you instantly do it, I can instantly flick my right joystick, playmaker to the right, and run it right. I'm just going to look at their look and say, which way do I want to go? Now, of course, you have a passing play here. You can go with this bootleg slide. You know, if you really want to, you can get out here and, and try to dot. I don't want to have to pass inside the five-yard line because it's super hard and it's not very forgiving down here. So what I want you to do is run wide zone and, and try to get in. Another really good run in here is this 26 duo. Look at this handoff. It's a super. It's a super good handoff animation, and this handoff makes it hard for them to blow this up for a loss of a, a couple yards. So you have the twenty six duo in here. You also have, as we're kind of looking at this playbook, you also have the halfback power, right? So here it is to the to the strong side. I would probably run duo to the strong side, and wide zone is actually really good. Like if you just flick it to the right, run this to the right you'll get some really good cutback lanes. And again, we're just trying to get two yards, three yards. You know, we're not trying to not trying to run for 100 yards. We're just trying to get the ball into the end zone, right? But another thing that you can do here that I will show you is this halfback power. Again, this is my favorite way to run the ball down here is stuff like this. Watch this power O. This power O is super hard to shoot in the backfield. Let's see if we can show it. There you see. That was goal line, I'm pretty sure. And we're just running it in. All right now against goal line, you're probably going to want to run stretch or wide zone. But power is a good run. Power is a really good run. Have power in there. Have, have wide zone in there. And, you, and you'll be fine. You'll score. Um, so if you if you got to score, you got to get down here and score, this is probably, for my money, this is what I would be in. Just because it's simple. And it's it's uh it's low risk. It's a low risk way to play. And then you do have in this playbook, you actually have some really good under center stuff. You have a um this wing close with the wide zone, the duo, the dive, the zone toss, the wing stack with a stretch, a dive, and a jet sweep. We haven't gone over jet sweeps yet. So you just this is the kind of stuff that I use in the red zone, right? Watch this jet sweep. We're just trying to kind of you know get out here with rice. Didn't work there, but there's really two ways to run a jet sweep. The first way is to try to get outside. The second way is to try to instantly cut directly straight up, and you see that that opens up a running lane. You know what I mean? So you can go here, instantly cut straight up, kind of trust the, the elements, and you're able to get in. So this is what I've been doing out of Bears. If you guys want to check out the full breakdowns that I offer, full ebooks, full schemes, Make sure that you join our school community. It's only ten dollars to be a member, and it gets you access to all of the best of my content, all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, full ebook schemes, where we literally have write up tutorials, video breakdowns, everything you need, a systematic approach to playing Madden. If you're looking to get better at the game, the school community is the best place to get better. It's only ten dollars to be a member over there, and if you want to sign up, the link is in the description below.